reconcile, um, to, to prove something, uh, to affirm or disprove, uh, I believe it can be done with the codes. It's, so before we, I show you anything I got, any of you guys got codes? Anybody working on anything? Yeah. Maybe, maybe later in the... Okay. I have, a, I have a small little code I started. Nothing real big. It's a, it's a Yeshua code. Okay. Yeshua codes, are your own name, it's all, it's all fine. I'm going to show you one with me uh, because the reason for those, you don't, know, you don't know any other subject better than yourself, right? I mean, that's, that's the whole explanation behind searching your name. You know the detail, the intimate details of, that only you and the Father would know about yourself. Uh, Yeshua codes, the same thing. If you know your Messiah, these are intimate details that you know about Yeshua. And so that truth will, will translate through these codes. Uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, a little clearly here in just a moment when, when I show you what I have. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so I put in the long spelling. Is it rendering yet? It's rendering, yeah. We haven't seen it. it takes it a moment. My computer's like super slow, too. I have like 30 things open. I feel like her outer. <laughs> mm. There it is. Wow. All right. I put in the long spelling of Yahushua, yod Hey wav shin wav Ion. And it came up, I think, in Deuteronomy. Genesis. Genesis 40 to Genesis 40, 14. So between the chapter 7 and chapter 14, um, it came up. And then I looked for Hamashiach, Messiah, the Messiah, and it came up. Um, I marked these two verses just because I like them. And in the vine... There were in the vine were there were three branches, and as it was budding, its blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe ripe grapes. And then this very next verse says, "I think that's it." And Joseph said unto him, "This is the interpretation of it: the three branches are three days." So that's as far as I got. Um, I'm still looking. Uh, for other words, there's something here I haven't marked it out. Um, yeah. This word here, let me see. You know, your three days is connected to the Mashiach with the Shin there. So um, I think that's significant because he spent three days in the grave. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. So it's hinged right on it. Right, right. Well, I was looking at this. Uh, you know, I start with each letter, and I started with this one. And I was looking for words around the letter, and Koth He Resh Yod Mem is to rise up. So I found that, you know, I found that interesting because it's the Messiah, and then you have to rise up right here. So I'm, I'm in the middle of tracing it back um, to see what it says. The Wav Yod He Yod right here actually means he is becoming or he became or accordingly. Um, and this is all, I, I use the IRS when looking for these words. So that way I can get the Strong's number and the meaning. And then I put them all into a file. That way I have them for when I do a presentation. Very smart. So that's as far as I got so far. Still working on it. Well, I see something. Um, pull that back up if you could. Yesterday, yeah. um, Glazerson did a, I, I saw a video from here. I just seen a phrase from his video right in yours there, which is uh, Ketz. Uh, Ketz, it's, uh, it's Ketz Shnat Emim. So the end of uh, the year of days, right where oh. you're, right. If you just go up two characters where you're, where you're, cursor is if you just go up two characters to that kuf right here kets snot and meme what does that say click on it and see what what that says there 
in the uh and it came to pass at the end of two full years that oh, Pharaoh yeah. dreamed and beheld and he stood by the river. Two full years. I, I I thought it was two full days. Two full years at the end of two full years. So he's got that in his one of his latest videos about um, uh, Isaac Luria, one of the uh, famous Kabbalists, and some prophecies he made. Um, but he, but he said at the end of two full years. And that that actual phrase is in his table. Oh wow! It's, and it that's just jumped out of me when I was, I was look sitting here looking at yours. Right here. Mm -hmm. And it stops at the mem, so it's from the coop to the mem. Yep. Awesome. That's it. That's I, I just happened to see that. And that was fresh on my mind from yesterday. So. <laughs> I mean, but that's as far as I got. I'm still working on it. Okay. Um, I have a small code also. Sure. Um, I kind of left everything I was doing. And um, let me see if I can find it here. Well, if I can find which one it is. <laughs> Why can't I see it? Um, that's interesting. Hmm. Oh, I don't know if this is it. Let me look. You got a lot of files. I do. Is this it? No, this is not it. One second. Oh, I know why. I have it open. Okay, let's see. Try it again. No worries, Lee. We just we're just kind of getting started. Okay, here we go. I think yes, I believe so. <clears throat> okay, here we are. So I kind of left everything I was working on because I hit a couple of dead ends and I was praying what I should do today. So I kind of went back um, with some words I had about a year and a half ago, and I kind of reworked some together. So this is all in the Book of Psalm. It's um, the access term is he hath known my name. Right <coughs> wow. It's sitting right on top of Yahuwah in the plain text. Um, uh, Yahushua, the shorter spelling is right here. Uh, Yod, let's see. Let me get that out of there. I never know how to do that. Okay, Yod, He, Wa, Shin, Ayan. Um, <clears throat> this green, the dark green, is um, he is sparing. So it has Yod, Het, Mem, Lamed, uh, and that is their one, two, put it, I put um, a rectangle around this one so you could see it three times. Um, the light green is wormwood. It's there three times. It's kind of interesting. I just noticed that there's three he is sparings and there's three wormwoods. Mm. Um, the yellow going right through the middle is a uh, comet. And this uh, rose color, reddish rose color, is he shall escape. Mm. And um, this verse right here. Pretty awesome. Um, Psalm 79 4. We are become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn, where's my cursor, and derision to them that are round about us. How long, Yahuwah, wilt thou be angry forever? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire? Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, remember not against us former iniquities, 
Let thy tender mercy speedily prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O Yahuwah, of our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. Amen. So it fits. Mm -hmm, it does fit. And then um, I think down here where it's talking about he is sparing. Uh, Psalm 146, 2. While I live, will I praise Yahuwah. I will sing praises unto my Elohim while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goes, goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the Elohim of Jacob for his help, <coughs> whose hope is in <coughs> Yahuwah, his Elohim. Mm. It's just, it was a very encouraging table. Um, sometimes when I get so soaked with all this stuff that's going on in the world, uh, I just say, what is really important and what's the bottom line of what we need to know? And we need to know his name. Amen. And it looks like you're exclusively in the Psalms. Yes. I, I would, yeah. I, I would, just chose Psalms. Mm -hmm. I would gamble that if you went line for line, it's going to be a consistent message of the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. different places in Psalms, basically saying the same thing. There's refuge in his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So that's that. Mm -hmm. Very good, Paula. Very encouraging. Yeah, and these tables should encourage. Um, I think that's one of the points why he, why he's given it to us as, as something to confirm or affirm uh, you know, something. I want to just kind of show you some all right so this is a really amazing table here and you guys probably recognize this right off the bat what this is very huge margin on either side it's only 20 letters yeah that's that's why it's just a thin strip um, this is Isaiah 53 and this is Yeshua is my name now it's a scaled down version I don't have every term in there because you wouldn't be able to see uh, it would just be a bunch of letters right but rest assured, every detail that I could find about the, the Messiah, and I didn't find this table. This is a Yaakov Ramsel. I reconstructed this. Um, it has an incredible amount of detail in just a small area. It's overwhelming. Um, the, the, prob the statistic information about is in the, in the trillions. So it's one in, in a trillion something. So this is like astronomical, that this would just happen by accident, right? That you've got Yeshua is my name with Mary right next to Yeshua is my name and death. Mary and death. So it reminds me, I've said before, of uh, in the Passion of the Christ where Yeshua is carrying his cross, but you see death with the baby kind of following beside him on the side and Mary's on the other side, right? She's, she's watching the procession. Remember, remember he drops down and he says, uh, no, no worries, uh, I'm going to make all things new, right? So a lot of detail um, in this, even kind of mirroring the, the image we got in the, the movie with death and Mary at the side of Yeshua with Mashiach running across there. Uh, this happened at Pesach. Of course, he is the lamb. The lamb caps it at the top. Uh, Peter is there. James, John, all of the disciples except for uh, you know Judas. You can find him under Judah, but that's not necessarily Judas are here. So a lot of details are here. Now, why am I showing you that? Well, because um, I just happened to search some stuff about uh, my name. Let me go there. Let me show you something similar. You see anything similar? It is virtually almost the same amount of letters, except there's uh, mine is 22. So instead of 20, I got 22. Now, why, now, 22 happens to be very significant to me. And you, sometimes you may see that. Uh, the number down here is, is significant in one reason or another to whatever topic. But in this case, um, that number happens to be something significant to me since the day I was born. It's always been my number, 22. Right? So this is where the Holy Spirit led me. And this is at a time where I'm feeling kind of down about myself, um, you know, 
thinking, what am I doing all this for? Um, is anybody really getting this? It's not really, you know, just down on myself. So here's what, what the Holy Spirit does. He, he reveals something about me um, in the codes. Now, how do I know this is me? You're probably asking yourself. Great question. Let me just show you. So the access term is Jonathan, right? You might say there's a lot of Jonathans in the world. Okay, so so Matthew is sitting right on top of that going in the other direction. So you got Jonathan and Matthew meeting together like that. You see the mem tet. Now you can spell this a couple ways. You can spell it with a tet or a tov. doesn't matter. So it says Matthew this way and Jonathan the other way. Okay, so you got your first and middle name. That's not really impressive, Code Searcher. Let's see some more. All right, so how about the, the, the last name? So the last name runs right through there, stopping at the tet. A little bit more detail, my mother's name, the year I was born. Uh, so uh, it starts here. So it's Hey, Tob. And of course, the reason it's on the other side is this is a cylinder, right? It's just laid flat. So that is actually just kind of like right here. If you looked at it in a straight line, the full year, the full year that I was born. Hey, Tob, Shin, Lum, and Gimel. Um, and then... Darla's name is in here, runs right there. The codes, the codes are here, running right there. Um, and I did find um, my kids here. That is not here, it's a very skilled down version. But also another thing that, that I, I just had to see with, was here, you may remember it from, um, from this larger table called, uh, and I don't see it on my choices. You guys able to see this here? Yes. All right, so so we got a table that's, um, it broke up into threes. You're, you guys are able to see this? It didn't give me this as an option. I just shared screen and hope that it landed here. You guys able to see this? So we got a, yes, we got yeah. letters, blue letters here. That's right. expensive. Say again. I said, yeah, that's extensive. That's well, this is, <laughs> this is the code searcher table that he, that he gave me years ago. This has an incredible amount of detail. Um, oh, wow. But I'm going to focus on just a, just a short area that kind of blew my mind. I've shared this with you guys before. It's the Jonathan that runs frontwards and backwards. Right? So you had Yod, Vav, Noon, Tav, Noon. And then the other direction, Yod, Vav, Noon, Tav, Noon. Jonathan runs frontwards and backwards and meets together right there like that. <clears throat> the reason why I'm showing you this is when I saw that manually, I was able to see this here as well. I didn't type this in. This just happened to be in my line of sight and I saw it because I know what Ben is. Ben is sun and I know what or is. Or is light. So you have the, the, the sun of light. We are either sons of darkness or, or sons of light. Uh, and so this reflects that in my very own table, son of light, right? In the time of distress. So that's a lot of letters. Six letters it says in the time of distress. What? He's an emissary. Shiloki. Debar Yehua, the word of Yehua. So he's an emissary with the word of Yehua. Now this term, bar, uh, excuse me, ben or son of light. If, if I take you back over to, because I was pulling, you know, things from my other table, I wanted to see if that was in this table. Um, so I'm going to take you to a scaled down version of it. You guys able to see this? This is the very same yes. table. And you see Matthew sitting on top of there. And I found that manually. I didn't look up, you know, a, a reverse of my name with Jonathan attached to it. I came here first because of the 22. He showed me this. Uh, and then found Matthew sitting uh, in the other direction, going like that. But let's, let's type in that anomaly. Ben or Son of Light. It's five letters. And there it is. It's in this table as well. 
So it should be consistent across. You see what I'm doing? It should be consistent across the board. <clears throat> Very awesome. Right. <laughs> if these things are true. Um, so we'll go back to that. I, I did it on that one because I wanted you to see it with no clutter, no, no, no other terms in there. Uh, so let's go back to, to where that is. <clears throat> um, so head codes, Darla in here, son of light. And this is how son of light appears when you rotate the cylinder, you know, Jonathan was over here with when I just showed you. And so I, it's rotated now back where, where Jonathan is right here. It's just so you can see all the other terms. Um, hidden is in there. Um, and then I found, uh, this is an abacus effect, children of fire, twice. Children of fire in there. So um, I was kind of blown away by that, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, well, what is the plain text? What's, where is this at? <clears throat> right? So let's take a look at that. So if I, if I start a little bit earlier up in the, in the top up here, we can kind of get a running start of where this is. So we're in the last chapters of, um, Isaiah going into, going into, um, the first chapters of Jeremiah. There it is. And I will set up a sign among them, and I will send those that uh, send those that escape. Now listen, that toward the end of, of Isaiah, he's speaking to the rim in the end times. And in scattered all over all around the world. We're talking about Israel that scattered the rim that, that has now become the Gentiles, right? They've lost their identity, they lost their uh, their tie to Israel. They have now become as the nations or the nations, uh, the Gentiles. Um, so it said, I will set a sign among them and I will send those to it that escape of them unto the nations to Tarshish, to pull, to lure, to, to draw the bow of Tobal and of, of Yavon to the isles afar off that have not heard of my fame, neither have seen my glory and sh they shall declare my glory among the, the Gentiles and they shall bring all of your brethren at, for an offering unto you who out of the nations upon the horses. And this is the gathering. You see that? This is the gathering. And in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain, Jerusalem, saith Yahuwah, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel to the house of Yahuwah. And I also will take of them priests and for Levites, saith Yahuwah. And uh, for the new heavens and a new earth I will make shall remain before me, saith you, and so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all shall all flesh come to worship before me. It's not going to be do done away with, by the way, guys, right? At the coming of Yeshua, guess what he's bringing? He's bringing all of these, all of these customs and things that we're going to be doing. You're actually required to come to Israel to tabernacle with him. And it says any nation that doesn't, it will be cursed, right? So this is the gathering, right? And see, see what he's saying here. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against me for their worm shall not, neither shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be abhorring to all flesh. And then we're going a little further into um, the actual table here. We start getting into the gimmel of the year around tw um, the 21st. But then it starts getting into where my mother's name is, as you can see there, um, 22, 23, 24. And so let's just keep reading into Jeremiah. In the words of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Hilkiah, of the priests that were at Anano, Antothoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word Yahuwah came in the days of Josiah, the son of King, uh, son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It also came in the days of uh, Je Jehoiakim, in the son of Josiah, and the king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, 
the son of Josiah, the king of Judah. It's almost like a tongue twister. Unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, the captives in the fifth months. Now, so again, we're talking about the captives going in, into diaspora or exile. Then the word of Yehoah came unto me saying, and here's what is really interesting because this runs right through my name, splitting the yoke. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then I said, ah, Yehoah Elohim, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Well, Yehoah said unto me, say not that I am a child, but thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Right. Hallelujah. I Amen. Bet that and you know, this, wonderful. of course, in the plain text, he's talking about Jeremiah. But in the context of this table, he is speaking directly to me. And not just to me, right. any one of you, any one of you guys that are searching your names, he'll do the same thing. He'll reveal the same thing of what yeah, but you were literally reading. praying about how were you even reaching anyone, which I can't believe you even think that that's the devil. And then he shows you your name with that verse talking about speak his words. That's beautiful. Yes. Uh, it's it, it see and it's you pray right? I don't that. but see I'm I'm sometimes slow on the uptake and I can be beat down. You know, I'm not some superhero. I can be beat down, especially when I'm in a dry season where right. you know I'm guys, you know, I love this class. I love that I have students, but they're they're you know, a handful of students will drop away in a month and you guys don't even know because they don't show up in class. That hurts the school because it I can't, we can't operate without having students, right? We're, we're operating on a skeleton right now. Um, I can't I, afford to lose any students. That's why I'm trying to get students in. The other thing is there are no donations coming in. So, you know, and then I got a water tank outside that it is almost dry because we haven't had rain in the right amount of days. Right. So all these things pile up and I'm thinking, father, what is going on? Isn't mine a dry season? You know, things are, what have I done wrong? Where did I go wrong? Am I doing something wrong? So you always self-examine. And then the enemy comes. You're right, uh, Willow. He'll say, you're nobody. Nobody's listening to you. What are you even doing this for? Right? They don't get it. They can't see it. And so he works on me. And so I'm sitting down at the computer last night, first time in a couple of weeks, I'm looking at codes and he brings me to this. And so he does it. He does to encourage, uh, to to to, you know, show you what he thinks about you. And, and, and I'm not putting myself on a, on a pedestal here by showing you this. I'm showing you um, because he's, he thinks the same about all of you. You're special to him. And he has you encoded in his word. And he has these kind of details there as well. You are also a son of or a daughter of light, right? He showed me, he, you know, I'm praying. I'm saying, where you got me hidden, Father? He says, I got you hidden among my prophets, Right. So there's just at the time of matter of fact, he brings to my memory right now. Elijah did the same thing. He was self-loathing. You know, yeah. I'm nothing. They're not listening to me. They're, he was running from Jezebel. Right. After he done defeated the, the Baals, had this huge victory. He's down in the dumps. He's running from Jezebel. And it was what did you would say, you know, uh, Elijah saying, you know, they're killing the prophets, Father. I'm, they're, they're, you know, I'm no match, basically. I'm paraphrasing. He says, look, I got thousands of prophets. <laughs> I'm the king. I'm the, the, the creator of the universe. What are you running from? Right? Kind of snaps him, too, because he got to the same place as, as I've been, where you just start thinking, what am I doing? Is it even worth it? Is this right? Am I, am I doing right? Am I Am I going the right direction, right? So all those things that the enemy tries to plant in and sow seeds of doubt and things like that, um, I endure that too. And so uh, this is where he brought me. He brought me to the first chapters of Jeremiah. And just as he said to Jeremiah, he shows me that's exactly where he has um, one place where he has me encoded. Of course, the other table that you guys saw, the more extensive one, uh, with all the details, has everything I could ever think of about my life, and, and good, the bad, and everything, is all there. Um, 
you know, all of my children, uh, my the wife that that left me, it's all there, and 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 it and it plays a role with the plain text. Um, so the scriptures are true in the context that it's written, but also when he is showing you something in in the coded, and all of these chapters are, and verses are coming around this cylinder, and they come together in a particular way that he put that there. He's showing you, you know, the details of the of the context that you're looking at in this case it was me um and so he, was, he shows you how they apply to you as well um so now now what what i thought about was the, the comparison between the yeshua is my name table which is 20 letters and i know that that is absolute truth it's it's 100 fact right and so i was wanting to show you guys with something very comparable which is a 22 letter table about me you can extract the same amount of detail you see that in that small strip if this is indeed me i should be able to find the details about me in this small strip without cheating without having to to bend and, and make things work right because you can kind of tweak and make these you know tamper you know, kind of you know, make these kind of go to the direction you want to, right? Only so far, but, but with this amount of letters, you can, that kind of limits you. You know, it's not like the whole uh, matrix or the two margins on either side are full of letters. We're working clearly we're working with less letters, uh, which change the um, statistical data. <clears throat> when you're working with less letters, <clears throat> everything goes up, right? So, we don't have, uh, it's not like, you know, they'll say, well, you can find that in a Chinese phone book, right? Well, and the reason they say that is because of the amount of letters and characters involved. That is not the case here. It's a very narrow strip of, of letters. It is either there or it is not there, right? I cannot force it, right? And Jonathan, look, your name is sitting right on yod Hey wap Hey. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so and that's where he's brought me to in my in my life is is um, as a uh, person that stands on his name is presenting his name, um, an emissary of his name. These things are true, and you can definitely see the, that reflect in in uh, these Bible codes. And so, therefore, <clears throat> that's why I have this passion. That's why we're doing this. You know that we have this school. Um, if it was just Listen, I could have picked a number of things to feed my family. I could go work on an oil pipeline. I was in the oil industry, working in oil fields or, uh, you know, construction fields, different fields where I can go and make money. I worked in a restaurant before. I managed an Italian restaurant for several years, right? So there are a number of things that I can go and do to take care of my family. This is what he's got me doing. <clears throat> Therefore, this passion, why is it? It's not here because of the money guys right this is, this is not this is not making me rich right it's only making me rich in heaven that's that's where it counts i'm um, doing this kind of work i'm oh, teaching these skills and and showing you guys how to do this because chris and i are not the only ones that are, that are supposed to be doing this it occurred to me that there are so many of these rabbis and people like michael drosden are doing codes uh, that that they are showing light they are bringing it to the world but doing a very poor job. Like for instance, Michael Drazen, the atheist who in by book three is telling people that, that aliens put codes in the Bible so that we can change the future. Uh, surely he's not a, a uh, emissary of the father that he's chosen to bring these codes. Right. Um, I, I just don't believe that. And I, the father did use him to get my attention. Uh, but I think the forefront, you guys, this is where he's going to do some amazing revelation, especially when we get into the Peshitta and we start working with the New Testament as well, for the most part, it's only been the Tanakh. It hasn't been the New Testament. So that's groundbreaking, uh, you know, open territory to go. Um, so that's all I got as far as my tables today. Anybody else working on codes? They're great tables, Jonathan. Thank you for sharing. Great table. Well, I hope you guys could just could see just from that, that, uh, you know, the, the amount of detail that you can pull out of that, that you know that is true, 
um, post priori terms, things that you, you know going into it, uh, excuse me, priori terms, things you know going into it. Post priori terms is something you discover after you've got your, your table, right? Some things that just might jump out uh, or you find manually. It all reveals this, this, uh, this truth. Who else has got tables? Uh, I got some experiment. Okay. Um, I'll just share it. Um, well, okay. Um, can you see this? Uh, it's rendering. Give it a moment. There it goes. Okay. I was just, um, I, this, this access code is, uh, I was using two dictionaries on my, uh, what is it called, for Kindle, on the Kindle. It's a Strong's dictionary and uh, another one that I, well, I, it's a Hebrew pocket dictionary. And um, this, this is cryptic, like, um, something cryptic, that's the access code. And I just, my name is here. I, and I was listening to like, um, uh, last video on YouTube. And I, then I decided to just t take my name into it because not to, not about me, but just checking, like, I thought, I, I think you were talking about something um, like if your name is in it, that it's something that he wants to show you. Yeah. Well, like, I was saying last week that, that typically, and I would think somewhere around 99% of the time, you're going to be able to find your name in your tables that you find as, as something that he's personalized um, and makes it a connection to you. Yeah. Like not, like not, to, not to, Yeah. Like a signature. Cause that's yeah, what I've yeah. been noticing too. It seems like whoever does a table, they find their name and it's almost like it's meant to be because it's your signature there because you found it first or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like not, not to try to put myself high up or something. Just, I was just thinking about if this was for me and, um, oh, wait a minute, the orange, this, I think it's this, um, it's it, no, the, uh, the oranges. It's it's here. This is a Megilla or a or a scroll, mm -hmm. and um, green is. I was thinking about how you spell the how, how do this is um, okay. The green is here. It's hey pay. Is it Saturday? It's um, um, well. It's a uh, dollar. What do you got there? Kuftal, it's uh, the precept, or how, how do you spell like uh, Kuti the code? Oh, oh, you got that's yeah. Pakudi has got a, it's got a yod on the end. There are there is a yod on those. Um, yeah, just just how the la after the dollar highlight the next letter, and you got co the codes. Yeah. Oh, is this so, uh, so? It would have been precepts there. Um, you, yeah. can drop, you can drop that, that pay off. Um, but you got, it looks like Yoda is on all of those. You could just go through there and just tap that Yoda on there. And that, that's, uh, uh is, do, do I take away the pay? Yeah. You take away the pay and then you have the, the code. So it's precepts probably is what the word is there. I was, so I, I just you know, couldn't, it, it it's, um, uh, Kuti, like yeah, with a yod. Yep, and it's if that has an if that has a mem on the end, you could put that on there. That that makes it. It's still that's codes. There you go. Kudim. Mm -hmm. Is that is that plural or? It's codes. Yeah, that would be codes. And the same thing on the other side, the far right side. You have a yod mem there. And so that looks like it's um, pakudim. Okay, I was. Basically, I didn't remember, and I was I was trying to find that, but mm -hmm. well, it's in there. Yeah. But uh, oops, uh, where is it? Um, 
Um, okay, the light blue, that's emperor. This this here, it's also somewhere, uh, it's uh, here and somewhere like through here or something. And uh, I was, I was just experimenting and, um, oh yeah, and the yellow is elite. But I was thinking about like, um, like uh, the scriptures, they may be cryptic, but um, don't I have this here? Um, oh yeah, uh, well, I found something. Well, this is just something. But how do you spell? I was thinking about like checking it out. Uh -huh. How do you spell Vatican? Vatican? Yeah. Uh, you can spell it Va, Tav, Yod. Okay, wait a minute. Um, Vav, Tav, Yod. Yod. Kof, Noon. So that would be the Q and then a Noon. Vatican. I was just thinking if it was, I hope it doesn't come all over the screen. And it, it's just... there to be there once or twice, maybe. Yeah. I was thinking, but, but we, well, we know they have messed up the scriptures, at least the name and stuff, but sorry, this is a bit slow, but it's, oh, it I don't know crash, why it's... It might crash it because you're streaming and you're searching at the same time. Oh, okay. Well, then I was talking about Constantine. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's a, the Megilla... Or the scroll. Well, I should just. Um, this is going so long. It's so really, really. You use well, a lot of CPU just to just to uh, broadcast your your voice and stuff. Uh, and yeah, you, I know. So. Um, but but yeah, I just I just leave it at that. But this is at least um, the. Um, I found cryptic and scroll the uh, the pre precept or the kuti, kutim mm -hmm. and emperor and elite, and I was looking for first cryptic scroll that the the Bible is a bit cryptic, mm -hmm. but then I went to precept like the codes and and the thinking about behind emperor and elite was to find out the Vatican and the and Constantine that the basically the, the emperor Con, Constantine was an emperor if I yeah and the elite I was thinking about maybe like the elite in uh, Israel or something or or some elite had in the Vatican or something had corrupted the scriptures, but we know that they, they have done that. So I'll, it's it's so it's so long. So I'll just stop sharing. But it, it's it's just it's it's I'm just practicing and trying. I'm not as adv advanced as you, Jonathan, but I'm just uh, trying trying to like get some skill. Right, that's okay. You know, experimenting, uh, you know, testing things out is perfectly fine. Yeah, I'm just I'm just practicing so I get better. Mm -hmm. Trying to find something out. Very well. Very Thank good. Thank you. Anybody else working on codes? And was that code you you put put out yesterday? Something you shared in class already? I was, wasn't it? Yeah, I did share that with y'all um, before it was completely done. Yep. You guys were my guinea pigs. Well, I shouldn't say that. That's a nasty thing to say. What? <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah, oh. I showed it to you guys first. <laughs> I do have something I'm working on if you want to see. Sure. It's a pre preliminary.
and for those that are there had came in while I was talking and if you if you watch the the archive of this you'll catch uh, what we were talking about in the beginning was talking about okay. how you can reconcile and, and confirm or disprove something with these codes okay, right. is that showing up it is we see it okay so yeah. it's not annotated it's not even done I don't know if I'm going to keep all these words or not so <clears throat> it's all found in the book of Genesis and the, the um, access term here is reality and it has a hey on the beginning so it's the reality so I don't know um, Jonathan is it suitable like if I was to give this a title like the word ultimate is in here this pink going up diagonal like would it be legitimate for me to call it the ultimate reality even though it's not all in one yeah yeah line? it doesn't have to be you know what your access uh, term is whatever you call it oh okay yeah. so an ultimate was only once in this whole table so <clears throat> it's only four letters long but it has a semek in it which is a rare letter if you guys have been you know doing the hebrew for a while you you know that semek doesn't come up a whole lot so um the ultimate reality what is the ultimate reality right so you know makes me think of the matrix where um, we think we're in the reality this is it this is all we see you know is what it is but it's so much more and i can see that this table is going to be <laughs> there's a gospel message attached to this um so anyways uh some of the words that are in here um truth is in here twice and that's here in this green uh sorry it starts here with the aleph going up amuta and it's also over here going down diagonal um we have yeshua he, he's crossing through the word truth and the word reality Yeshua and Yeshua is also over here um, going vertical and I've never had this occur before that I can remember is I have Yeshua going the same skip as the access term Elohim is here in the blue and Yahuwah is here in the uh, teal or whatever that is so all three of those names are in uh, the same skip as reality <laughs> um then we have uh heaven and sheol are in here and heaven and sheol both cross the access term um so shamim is here with the two yodes um and it's here shamim and it's also here with just the one yod, but they all mean heaven. And then the sheol, which can be hell or the underworld, but it's here. So there's um, heaven and sheol, both crossing reality. <laughs> um, then we have rush, reshoot, rush, I don't know how to say that. Rashid, but it means authority or power. Uh, verification or substantiation. Yeah, there's some, some verse that says something about our faith being made sight or something like that. That's the, I have to look that up. But someday we're going to see this. It's going to be our reality that we see. Right now we don't, but it will be substantiated one day. Um, um, love, aha, is twice. It's here in the pink, and then it's up here more to the right. Aha, uh, and three times are words to do with fear or ah. This one here is um, fear, and um, here is fear in this green. And the other one is here. It's fearful. 
and the verse that came right away to my mind was, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. Um, and, you know, Yeshua said, fear not him who can kill the body, but him who can throw, you know, <laughs> throw you into hell or Sheol or whatever the word was that he used, or Gehenna, I don't know what it was. I haven't looked that up yet. Um, and then I showed you ultimate. And I think, oh yeah, and parallel to fear is uh, the word flame or fire. So that needs no further explanation. Okay, so that's, that's how that's coming along right now. Okay, thanks for your time. Hey, wait, did I do that one? Oh, Tamim, that's um, perfect or flawless. So that's, you know, Yahuwah, that's his word is flawless. Yeshua was uh, the perfect sacrifice. So Tamim, and that's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Very great. <laughs> so many words, so many great words there. Mm -hmm. And all oh. relevant. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, I have to. I think she's searching those. Yeah. I have I to have. say one thing. What's that? Uh, many many people don't believe in hell, but now in the in the um, mainstream theaters, there's at least here there is a movie, was called he Hell Boy. And that's about hell, and people see it as fiction. Yeah. They don't understand it's real. That's, that's, right. that's scary. That's scary. That's right. It just it just punches it in their eyes, and they don't see it. Yeah, and there's sure. lots of stories out there of people who have you know had the near death experiences, and you know a lot of them are positive, but there are a lot that are negative. And uh, yeah. they come back and their lives are changed. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they usually get saved pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a, cha I've got a video on my channel that, that impacted me of a, of a young Marine um, playing Marine games as, as, as we do when there's a lot of time on our hands, when there's downtimes, Marines get in trouble, right? So in this, in this situation, this Marine stuck his head into a noose uh, and another Marine kind of slammed it down on him. Uh, not meaning to, to hang the guy, but it was an accident. The guy choked himself out and for eight minutes he was in the outer darkness. Is That's what he just described it as. He don't believe that he went to actually inside the, the bowels of hell. Like some of them, um, there are some um, testimonies online where people actually see the bowels of hell. This guy believes that he was in what was called the outer darkness um, at the, at the gates of hell, in other words. And uh, that's where he had his experience. And, um, you know, I didn't know that Marine personally, but I believe every single word he was saying, because I could see in his eyes, he was telling the truth. He wasn't just making that stuff up. Right. He didn't make that stuff up to do some kind of YouTube channel uh, and, and go famous. He was telling his story and uh, you could, you could definitely feel, I, I was gripped in his testimony. I couldn't pull myself away because I believed every word he was saying. And um, I believe he, he was experiencing what he said he experienced and it was, it was not good. <laughs> um, now you shared that Jonathan on your um, YouTube. If, if people go back in your yeah, YouTube, it's still there. I forget what you called it, but yeah. But, yeah, but was, uh, it should be the, the debuting video on my channel when people go to my channel it should be the first thing they, they see is uh, that but but didn't this guy um, refer to a movie that was similar in that video uh, yeah uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure if, if that's... I, th I think it's the same one he was referring to a movie and I actually saw it on the television. I could rent it, and I rented it, and it was not pretty. 
I just had to see this movie because he was referring to it. Mm. It was like, not not a, <laughs> well, I, I just did it because of that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there are people who've had experiences. Now, not everything I believe, is, is, you know, is, is a near-death experience where, you know, people are seeing actual what's on the other side. I saw a testimony of a guy who, who talked about how people have crossed over, but they're only there for a little while. And while they're there, they think that they're seeing heaven uh, because the demons want them to believe that's what they're going to go into. Right. But that's not exactly how it is. They're, they're tricksters. They're tricking them. Um, this one testimony was like this, this girl had come in and she thought she was there with her grandmother and at the family farm and yada, yada, yada. And he was watching her. This guy has, has, you know, he's in the bowels of, of hell watching her in a cell. She thinks she's at her grandmother's house and it's all set up in her, in her own little world in this cell. And uh, she sits down and these trees begin to, to encapes her and, 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 she realizes she's not at grandma's house. She's, she's in somewhere bad and everything that's familiar to her turns into demons and, uh, consume her. Um, uh, yeah, know, I read it. Sorry. No, I was just looking at the comments. Somebody put there in seven minutes in hell. Leah's putting down. I think that guy is Brian something, uh, that, that, that told that testimony where he sees this girl who thinks she's with her grandmother. Um, that's a really big, big video on YouTube. I think that guy goes around the churches telling his story, but he had something very similar. He died. He, he had a, a near death experience where he um, contracted like dengue fever or something like that. And from, from drinking water and uh, he actually went to hell. These are the things he saw. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say years ago, I read a book by this Dr. Morris Rawlings, and he was interested in why are there so many positive stories? He was, he was born again at this time. Yeah. He got saved through someone. He was a, I think he was a heart specialist or something, a cardiologist, and someone had a heart attack right on the treadmill, you know, in front of him. And the guy said, you know, my feet are burning, get me out of here. <laughs> and, uh, Anyways, and he went back to interview this guy after he'd been resuscitated, like maybe three days after the experience, and the guy didn't remember anything negative. He said, oh, it was just peaceful or whatever. So you can be deceived. Like a lot of them out there are like new age deceptions. And once you're in the spirit realm, you're more susceptible. Actually, the demon, I think they can fool you if you're not a believer yeah. and just... Yeah make you feel the love and somehow look like grandma and, you know, say the things that she used to say because there's familiar spirits. They've right. been in the family for years and years and they know what you've heard. Uh, and so, yeah, there's so much deception in, in those stories. Yeah. I don't believe every one that I hear, especially the positive ones. And, right. you know, when you, hear, if, when you hear people going and there's, it's just bright light and everything is cotton candy and lollipops and everything is fine. <laughs> Everybody's going to heaven from listening to this guy that, that was in the bounds talk. He, he gives an explanation that these demons and these spirits, they know when somebody is having a near death experience. In other words, they're only there for a short period of time. They're going back. Here's the thing. They don't want them to know that it's darkness that they're going in. So what they do is they put on a big show for them when they do cross over so that it deceives them. They sure don't want them to bring back the truth, which is it's gnashing of teeth. It's people ripping themselves apart. It's demons consuming uh, people over and over and over again. They don't want them to see that. So they put on a big show for them. It's all cotton candy and grandma smiles. Uh, bright lights and everything is fine, right? We're all just about love here, right? And then they take that back with them when they wake up, um, thinking the whole time they saw heaven and they didn't see heaven. They saw a really deceiving part of hell, which is these, these demons are tricksters. 
Uh, you hear people talk about that sometimes. They, they encounter these tricksters in, in uh, their experience. Has anybody got anything they want to add? Any questions? Or codes that you want to share? I got something I want to share. Shalom, Rick. How are you? Let me turn on my thing here. How's it going, Rick? Shalom. What's going on? So, I don't know if you guys saw my my little post on Discord this weekend. Um, I was I was reading the book of uh, the the book of Ezra, the second book of Ezra, which is uh, which is not in the in the sixty six books. Um, and so there's so I was reading about this and. One of the things that, that popped out was that um, Yeshua actually quoted from the book of Ezra. Um, and it was it was a simple quote. It was and it's a very memorable quote. It's, it was in um, Matthew 23 where he talk says, you know, I, I was like a I was like a hen brooding her chickens. That's how I want to have a relationship with you. And you won't allow it. It's basically what he says. But he, the, the hen brooding her chicks is, is the uh, metaphor. And so in Ezra, the second, uh, the, the second book of Ezra, the, second, the first chapter, I believe, um, you guys can go back and look at my, my, my notes from the, uh, in Discord if you want. But we're thinking about this. And I'm going, wow, that's amazing that 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 Yeshua was was actually reading all these books, like reading them and, and memorizing them. Like, you know, we, we all know about the, the the book of Isaiah, you know, chapter 61, where he opens his ministry, you know, just reciting from you know the Isaiah 61. And 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 we all know about, you know, he's 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 quoting from Psalm 21, you know, when he's on the cross. There's other ones in there too. I don't remember, but those are the memorable ones. Um, so I found this, and I was like, "Wow, he, he was reading." He, I mean, that he, he was spending a lot of time in Scripture, and and that is unique because for us, we're sitting in front of our computers all day, right? We're sitting here, you know, consuming this information, and it's pouring into our brains. Okay, some of it good, some of it not so good, but it's pouring into our brains. Back then, you had these scrolls. They weren't the most convenient thing. You actually had to, to go someplace to read these scrolls. You couldn't take, take them home. You were there reading these scrolls. So I'm thinking about I'm going, wow, that's amazing. And then about the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm reading a bit, video, and he's talking about, how Yeshua was actually a yogi, okay, and that that he knew the chakras and he knew all this stuff about our our bodies. And I was like, screw that. He 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 spent most of his time in scripture. It's really obvious to me. You know, I don't. You know, and I'm talking about when they got back from Egypt and they resettled in Nazareth and you know all that. You know, his growing up years. So I was watching a third video, and I'm going, and this was really coincidental. The guy was, it was, it was about the early life of Yeshua, and I was like, this will be an interesting one. And so, he, so, so I'm watching it. And he says, so Yeshua probably spent. Remember the the quote where he says, you know, he gets lost. Or his mother and father can't find him, and they find him in the temple. And he says, "Why? Why are you getting upset? I'm in my father's house. That's where I'm going to be." And so he, you know, he's so. Um, I'm going to cap it off by showing this. Uh, hold on. Gosh, I wish I knew how to share my screen. Well, 
was the second book of Ezra. That Can you the, see my screen? It's rendering. Yeah. Where, yeah, it was second Ezra. Where, where was it about the Krakras? Was that well, in a video? Well, let, me, let, let me get to your question in a second, okay, Harold? Okay. Um, so, I, I'll, I'll get to it. So, the guy was talking about how there's this town that Yeshua was probably going to on a regular basis. The name of the town? Sephorus. Sephorus. It's, it's where the scrolls are. It's the name of the town. Now, I don't know what the IS at the end is, but I know Sephir is, is scroll or book. Mm -hmm. So I was just, uh, it was, it's an anomaly, but it's, it's a little gem I just sort of picked up. I was like, he says, yeah, he probably spent a lot of time. So, Sephiris is, 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 is a metropolitan city compared to Nazareth. It's a metropolitan city. He probably went there to do his study. I just found that amazing. All right, Heralder, what, what was your question? He was asking you about the, where, where you saw something about chakras. You, he, he, the word chakra. Oh, oh, chakras. It was just a video. It was just, you know, one of those videos. Well, the, the, guy was, the guy was just being. He was know, making, a, making a claim. Yeah, he was making a claim that, you know, Yeshua was a yogi and he understood all this Hindu stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to tell you, I, for some, uh, about, for some years ago, I bought a book that was like um, the New Age Gospel of Yeshua or Jesus. And they say he went to India and studied and stuff, you know, and I just, I threw it out. And um, I, I actually, I think it's the Mormons, they believe that he went to America, mm -hmm. the U.S. So there's like, there's like these deceptions, they are just, they are, some, some believe it, and, but it's, it's ridiculous. I, I can't see him doing it. I can't, I mean, he may have had knowledge of it, but I can't see him doing it. I mean, no. spend some time with those scrolls. I mean, I mean, I mean, think about like how hard it would be to be, you know, ambitious enough, you know, for the father to be reading all these scrolls and I'm just like going, he ain't hanging out in Tibet at the same time. No. No, but you did make a comment about when he was a boy um, being found at the temple. You know, when, when, when the, the Passover was over, when they had to go and do these census and everything, um, and uh, before they, he was around 12 or so. He was a young boy, but he got left in Jerusalem by his parents. Uh, I guess they thought he might have went back to wherever they were, but he was in, at the temple when they come back and they found him, right? He was with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus writes about it later. How about the just, you know, extraordinary prodigy? That's how they saw him as a prodigy because he's going around quoting scripture uh, like, like he was a very seasoned sage. And this is why they were very intrigued by him and, and why um, Nicodemus took to him because Nicodemus knew him as a boy um, and, and he was extraordinarily talented in Torah. He, he could quote scripture. When he comes into this, the, uh, <clears throat> into his ministry age and he goes into the synagogue and he pulls from, from Isaiah, you know, you know, and he's, he's quoting scripture. I don't think he actually needed the scroll to read it. I think he pulled that scroll laid it out in front of him and actually recited it while he was looking at the sages or the, uh, the, the Talmudim in the room. Um, because he was making a prophetic statement when he, when he did that. Um, some fascinating stuff about Yeshua other than, um, you know, what you find in scripture, you can find in um, the testimony of Nicodemus, which it seems to go hand in hand with the scriptures and even gives you more details about uh, what went on behind the scenes. Um, you know, Nicodemus would meet with Yeshua uh, under a covenant of darkness and have long discussions about um, being born again and things like that, right?
Well, Nicodemus wrote about it. As you Is would that the book of Nicodemus that you're talking about, Jonathan? Say again? Is that the book of Nicodemus? That the book the other? of Nicodemus, right, which is not a canon book. And, and I say that, not that I'm, I'm, you know, a Catholic following after what they canonize, but we know clearly there are more than 66. Matter of fact, the book of Estra, the book of Ezra, it even says in there that Baruch and Jeremiah was to hide. They, they hid a lot of writings. There are a lot of writings that we don't have in the, in the quote, canon, that Baruch and Jeremiah were told to hit. And you can find that in Ezra where it talks about that there's, there are many hidden scrolls that, that haven't been revealed yet that hold a lot of information that's going to fill in these, these uh, you know, empty places, sort of like a jigsaw puzzle uh, where it fits, right? So I just like to, when I, I, I just like to see little tidbits of, of little gems of, of proof where you see, you know, Yeshua quoting from the book of Enoch. Yeah. Where you see him quoting from this book of Ezra. I mean, yeah. It's very, um, it's it, it built. It's very confirming. It's very affirming, knowing that you go, you're, you know, you, you, I, everybody here is spending a lot of time in these books. Yeah. You know, we, we're we're in it on a daily basis. You know, either inquiring or you know, in, in, our, in our study, you know, reading and comparing, you know, versions and comparing it to Hebrew and all this, trying to figure out. Uh, and and it's, it's, it's weird because I feel compelled to do it. I feel compelled to do it. And I don't know why I feel compelled to do it because it's laborious. It's a pain in the butt. I mean, you know, and, and uh, it, I would do the codes too, but it's just, it's overwhelmingly um, difficult for me. I just, just doing this little bit of research that I did over the weekend. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's, he, he was reading those scrolls and so oh, it's suffering. Yeah. No, yeah, it's very clear. And he, and Yahuwah points it right out. He gives him the name, a, a town, the, the name of a town. I'm like, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. And there's probably no 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 um, um, coincidence that you know he's from Nazareth in Nazarene. And it's, it's also quoted from the from many books. Uh, for example, the um, book of Yasser and the uh, I think it's a book called God the Seer and many more books. That, that book of the kings, which I don't think is is available but um, there is many quotes in the old old testament that from books that we don't have or may i have the suffer so i have more access to it <laughs> yeah just one day would... walk. go ahead go ahead, go ahead. i was just gonna say just one day's walk from jerusalem is that where they found the dead sea scrolls right it's about you know 20 30 miles uh, to where those are now in those caches that they're finding are significant books like the book of Enoch or the war scrolls, um, Ezra, um, a lot of these that are not in the canon, but yet we can see quotes from other people in the, uh, Bible. And so it kind of draws you to want to go read what that is. And then when you get there, it, it answers some questions. It fills in some blanks and it, and begins to paint a broader picture of, of things behind the scenes. Uh, you heard me mention about Nicodemus and the conversations we see him having with Yeshua in the scriptures. But then you ask yourself, well, if, if you know, having this kind of interaction, you would think that Nicodemus would write about this. Well, indeed he did. And so, you know, then you go and read that and it's like, oh my gosh, um, it is so much revealed there. It's no. and, um, it's kind of like Jonathan. There's other stuff, the Gnostic stuff that's hanging out there, um, the Nag Hammadi and, and all that kind of stuff. Where I don't know about you, but it makes no sense. Right. Like yeah. like that that one book, the Pistis Sophia. I don't know if you guys ever read it. Take a, spend some time with the PDF of it. You can't get through a couple of pages of it. It is so dense. And cryptic and convoluted. I mean, it's really hard. And I and 
and, and to, 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 to believe that level of mechanics of how the world works, supposedly. supposedly. I, I can't get through it. I, I literally can't get through it. I can get through, you know, scriptural stuff where I look at it and I go, I look at the book of Ezra and I'm going, yeah, I could see this. You read it and it reads like uh, Jeremiah. It reads like Ezekiel. I'm going, but this is so good. It read like anything like that. Yeah. And and have you read it, Jonathan? Have you have you at least tried to read it? Actually, I've been sitting in with um, Parable of the Vineyard, uh, Adam Fink, and those guys over there, friends of mine. Um, they've been doing uh, readings every Friday. Every every Friday, they'll they'll do uh, some of these books, and so I'll put it on and listen to it. Um, go back and listen to it again, and and uh, I'll, I do that instead of. Um, and that way I can multitask in the background and do things and listen um, instead of just sitting down and actually reading it myself. So I haven't actually sat down and read it myself, um, but I have sat in and listened on the, um, the public. It's reading. a difficult book. It's a yeah. difficult book. And, and I, I don't know what to make of it, but it's, you know, the, the, they'll, they'll refer to pieces of it that said, well, Yeshua said this, and Yeshua said that, and I'm going, it doesn't line up. Mentally, to me, it doesn't line up. You know, the, 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 the plumb line is wrong or something. I, I don't know. But when I was reading over the weekend this, this second book of Ezra, I'm looking at it and going, yep, I can see Yeshua reading this. I can see Yeshua using these metaphors. I, can, I, I, I get it. And, and, it, and, um, and so this, that, that was sort of the capper for my, for my weekend of, of, of research. So I just thought I'd share it, and if you, again, the the whole thing is on the the, the, the about the Ezra in um in, in Discord. If you want to take a look, just a couple of notes about the brooding, the head brooding chicks or whatever, and then the other one, the 144,000, 145,000. How how Book of Ezra gives you a second description of the of, the, of that event and a second witness. And I thought that was really clarifying. Unless, you know, unless John was reading Book of Ezra and then, you know, psychically, you know, re reanimated it, um, you know, I, I, but I don't, I don't know about that because because the the words were different. The words were different, but the event was the same. If that makes sense. Yeah. Leah, you got a, you got a question? Well, I, I I was just going to add that it was it's interesting that um, uh, the actual early Christians when they first came over um, to like the United States and that they their King James, which is um, or it was the Geneva, I should say, uh, it, it did contain all those books. Um, Ezra's and uh, Jubilees and mm -hmm. Enoch and all of that. So, uh, you know, it's not that long ago that that was considered part of the the canon. And then, for whatever reason, they decided to make make it kind of, um, you know, like it was um, condemned or you know that. Oh. I know myself when I I struggled for quite some time not knowing whether. It, I was supposed to read that or not uh, with the book of Enoch and that. And I kept feeling like I was doing some, you know, something wrong at first until I researched and found out that it was all part of, and then they say that they found um, like some lost tribes in Ethiopia that actually um, follow all of the, um, the wow. Sabbath and all of the, um, feasts and holy days and all of that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And they have all those books in their writings as well. Well, I think uh, to me, it just occurred to me that that might be part of the end times deception is that, Oh, those books, they're not for us today, mm -hmm. but they actually are. <laughs> yeah. And so I think in the end times and it, it, like, like once, um, who is it? Once um, Elijah comes back, and restores all things, I believe all those books will be either opened or have been opened by then. Yeah. 
Amen, brother. You know, yeah. what I mean? you know the, the, in Revelation, they talk, it talks about, you know, Elijah's going to come again. And um, so, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm appreciative. I, I think we have to use discernment, but for like new believers to like, I, I trust the Sefer for, for at least I, I have to read more in it. But uh, I think for, for our new believers, it's really not good to go, uh, for example, to the Gnostic text. That's just like, because there's so many, like, it's, I think it's twisted. I have, haven't read it, but uh, if we use discernment and, and grow in the, just the scriptures, then we can know better what is scripture. Well, some of that stuff is just flat out weird, though. And, yeah. I mean, and, you know, like, like, I, mean, I don't want like, to name names, but there's, there's satanic stuff in there. Yeah. And there's one, that, there's one book that's called um, um, The Book of Adam and Eve, and they're saying, like, Yeshua was, he, the something a bird died and he he revived it and so it's it's really weird so so weird. i wouldn't recommend that mm. well see, um, it, no, it, it that, go, go ahead i'm just saying it has to line up with with the 66 books that's like your that, core. that's a great point that is yeah. like a super yeah. good if you exactly. there's be some cross referencing in there right yeah if it contradicts just don't read any further like yeah. another book, but but but, well uh, but, in scriptures. but books like the book of Nicodemus are extremely illuminating yeah. in terms of like what Yeshua did for those three days in the earth. Yeah, gives you back so some backstory and a little bit of extra yeah. stuff going and, on. And, but so, but uh, oh. go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but Jonathan, I was not referring to the same book that you were showing. It's another. It's another book. Right, right. He, he, what he's talking about is the CIA redacted and, and whitewashed book, the Adam and Eve story, which is a a, uh, a novel about the catastrophes of the last days. Uh, not to be confused with the Adam and Eve. Uh, the book, book of Adam and Eve. Yeah, the book of Adam and Eve that actually talks about Adam and Eve, right? And um, what they went through. The the it, it goes into a lot. You know, a lot of uh, interaction with Satan and with Yahuwah and these uh, these two who are now in this flesh suit, right? And so it, the 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 devil kind of torments them and, le and you know he he it, it dries up the tree and the you know just torments them in that in that story and it's just over and over again. Um, and, and you know it sounds like a really interesting story, it's very plausible, but how how can we test it? And it doesn't necessarily line up with scripture right um but again it's book of nicodemus how do you test that the, well the nicodemus is kind of like watching um you know the the passion of the christ and then you know gibson is coming out with the resurrection movie right it's just it's the other part of the story so it it, it plays all the way through without any niches and not any without any bumps right same thing with nicodemus you, when you know the story of the Bible and then you, you get to Nicodemus, it's like he, he, he takes over and he, and he finished telling the story from his perspective. For instance, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea were both um, sages. They were both of the Sanhedrin and among those, uh, those, those guys that, that crucified Yeshua. Those two guys were on Yeshua's side, right? Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were wise so, men. I thought Joseph was related, like like no, blood no, related. Nope, no, he was not. He he felt that Yeshua was the Messiah. These two guys had interaction with Yeshua when they, when he was a boy. He, I've been reading that that he was a, his uncle. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong about that, but I, I from what I've gathered, it was no relation other than that. Um, Joseph of Arimathea believed that Yeshua was and is the Messiah, and therefore, um, uh, does anybody else have any any clarifying? 
I don't know about um, – uh, you guys are talking about the, like, the extra canonical books and stuff, and I don't know if anybody's read them yet, but if you read the first and second Maccabees, that is a brutal book. It explains about John Maccabee and, and the stuff he went through. I'm telling you what, that is a brutal, brutal book. Warfare. Yeah, but, That'll give you some history right there. Yeah, and that's exactly what it is. It's a historical record that predates Yeshua's before the time of Yeshua. Uh, the, the Maccabees happened at the time of the uh, abomination of desolation, right? That happened right. during the Maccabees. Um, I have a question. What book, Rick, are you saying is confusing? I'm saying the, the Gnostic Gospels. Well, not the, the Gnostic, uh, the Nag Hammadi, stuff they, they brought up out of the Nag Hammadi um, uh, mining, I feel like for a better word. So what were the names of those books? What, one of the book is Pistis Sophia. So oh. the Epistle of Sophia? Just the well, name. Pistis. P-I-S-T. Pistis. P-I-S-T-U-S. Sophia. S-O-P-H-I-A. That's the wisdom. Yeah. Sophia is wisdom. That's like from Greek. So yeah. that's kind of kind of telling. But I just want to say, like, um, first Enoch, I trust that. But then there comes second and third Enoch, which I don't think is, is inspired. I think it comes down to um, a lot of dis discernment. Uh, when I ordered my um, 1560 Geneva, and then I, I ordered the uh, Hexopla at the same time, so the guy threw in a book for me that was um, a bunch of extra biblical stories as well. And one of them was, um, it was talking about Jesus when he was a boy that he pushed a, a, another boy off a roof and broke his neck. And there was, uh, it, I think it had like um, uh, the gospel of Mary a bunch of different books, uh, like it was a smaller book, but it had a bunch of different stories in it. And I, I just, as soon as I started reading it, I, I felt that there was, was something amiss. And luckily, I guess I kind of, I left it in um, a drawer in Iceland when uh, my mother and I were visiting there. So I, I never got the chance to read any further but just even that one the uh sophia just the name sophia is a deity so it just kind it's, of right at the top it makes you think well that's that's uh, opposing to scripture sophia is basically a greek concept of wisdom or di or some kind of um but very in iceland yeah yeah, and I ended up leaving that book in Iceland at one of the uh, Airbnbs that we stayed at. <laughs> oh, was it long ago? Uh, three years ago, I guess. Oh, Four you, know, you know, I'm in Iceland. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, fun. Hey, Rick. Fun to hear. Yeah. My, my understanding, I've read some of this here, what you have yeah. uh, before, like Nag Hammadi and stuff, and I believe that that's pretty much all doctrines of demons and it's used by people today in the dark side is that right because yeah. this is just weird stuff to me like it doesn't match up anything that i've you know in in hebrew like it doesn't it doesn't tie out it doesn't i mean first commandment and up to the regions of the first mystery where where is that coming from i don't know and so like, the it's mystery very religions. Nice. Very the nice. mystery religions love this stuff. Well, the name Jesus right off is a fake name. That's a created name by Constantine. So it, it says in the first line, he passed that he passed eleven years discursing with the disciple. Eleven years. That's like what? Yeah. No, this is this is like I, 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 it's. You know, like, like, it could be like, like, like Ian says, it could be like demon generated. I mean, I have no idea, but this is not the only one. This is the one I know about that, that is just confusing. My point is, in the, and the reason I'm talking was I, I was, I, 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 I got a second, another description of Yeshua 
you know, memorizing passages of, of, of books and that are not necessarily in the canon. And I was, I was, I was, um, it was, it's reaffirming, it's reaffirming that at least some of the books, you know, Jasher and things like that are, um, were, were, um, I don't want to say allowed, allowed is not, probably not the right word, but um, were, were resources. Studied. So, anyway. If, if I can add an embellishment to what Rick started out with and what he shared yesterday, it struck a chord with me about the hen with her brood, because just before you shared that, Rick, I have a young hen going broody on me. And I lifted her off the nest to mark the eggs. And I set her down below. And when she got up to move to come back upstairs to the nesting box, there was another egg that she had been holding under her wing that tight for me to lift her up and move her through the air. And she had that egg and kept it safe up under her wing like that. And I just thought that that was so cool to what you were saying, that that's how close he keeps us. Yeah, and if you go back to um, Psalm 91, um, let me see if I can pull that up here. The dove in the cleft? No, Psalm 91 is about, is, is you're under his wing. I think that's what it was. Just for the city people, you know, that that's how, how they take care of their young. I just thought it was... A neat embellishment. In uh, Psalm 91, hold on a second, let me pull that one up again. Um, yeah, the, the secret place. In Psalm 91, he will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you'll find refuge. So. It's definitely a metaphor for um, protection, isn't it? I wanted to protect you, and you didn't allow it. Very much so. Yeah. Right, just in, in Ezra, that's, 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 that's what, what, what Yahuwah was saying. And then Yeshua repeats it, um, you know, with the, with, the, with the Pharisees and scribes. Anyway, that's all I've got. And thank you for your comments. That I, I'm appreciative. Anybody else? Can you, anything you want to add? How you guys doing in your modules? Uh, how's that going along with those that are working modules? Oh, I have some problem signing in. Signing in. Going to. Let me write that down so we can deal with it. So you, you mean signing into the web page? Yeah, it just doesn't come up. The VP admin. I'm not sure what's, if it's my computer or what it is. I think other people said they were having a little bit of trouble too. Okay, so everybody's having trouble signing in. All right, we'll see what that's about. Just to get to the first page. Harry, Harry, you just said VP admin. You mean WP? Yeah, yeah, WP. Okay. The 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 link that's in to the to the modules. Okay, I'll get I'll get on that and see what that's about. Other than that, anything else? Any any concerns or any questions anyone wants to ask no no more codes all right guys well we've gone about an hour and 45 minutes i'm gonna wrap it up here and get this uploaded if you missed the first part of the class uh, make sure you catch that in discord uh we did talk about codes in the earlier uh, minutes of this meeting. All right, last call. Anything else anybody wants to add before I close? All right, great meeting today, guys. Uh, it's good to see you all here. Let me pray for you, and we'll see you in the next.
uh, next meeting. All right. Vina Makina, we are so thankful for what you're doing, Father, in this school and with these students. We just ask that you continue on with them, Father, in their journey, uh, that you would reveal yourself in your word, Father, that uh, you would come alive to them, uh, confirm uh, and, and reveal yourself in a mighty way. <laughs> if they're sick in their body, Father, that you would heal them. Uh, if they're in need, Father, that you would meet their need. Go with them this week. Bring them back in the appointed time. Keep them protected from the enemy. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right, guys. We love you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. Amen. Love you guys. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, everyone.